There are just eight games left to go here in season two of the realistic takeover rebuild with Everton. And that means the race for European football is well and truly on. We currently find ourselves sitting in seventh position in the Premier League. Two places and three points away from Europa League football. And we face two of our main competitors for that Europa League spot in today's episode as we travel first to Stamford Bridge and then to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Chelsea are currently just a place below us on level on 44 points, but they do have a game in hand, as do Spurs, who currently sit in 11th place on 43 points. So it's absolutely essential that we come away with a good result in each of those two games. We also have a home matchup against Arsenal to get to in this episode, and we will be rounding things out with a trip to Brentford. Brain Potter's squad has been slightly bolstered in recent weeks. Joachim Anderson has returned to first team action and whilst he hasn't stepped foot on the field yet Lewis Dobbin has also returned to training which leaves just Asan Diaw and Reese Nelson sidelined and they will be out for the remainder of the season but neither Anderson nor Dobbin will feature against Chelsea instead it's going to be Pickford in goal James Justin comes into the back five alongside James Tarkovsky I'm gonna do Onana and James Garner as a bit of a throwback pairing in central midfield and it's going to be Jack Harrison and Bertrand Traore to support Matthias Cunha up front. And we got off to the quickest start in this one. Onana laying the ball into the feet of Matthias Cunha, who struck towards goal from about the edge of the box. And it was parried away by the Chelsea goalkeeper. And we got off to the quickest start in this one. Onana laying the ball into the feet of Matthias Cunha, who struck towards goal from about the edge of the box and it was parried away by the Chelsea goalkeeper but Matthias Cunha did give us the lead on about the half hour mark as he broke through the Chelsea back line Jack Harrison slipped the ball through to him and he made absolutely no mistake with the finish clinical as ever and we piled on the pressure in the first half it was a really dominant performance and Bertrand Traore having scored two goals in the previous game flashed this one wide a right footed shot is significantly weaker of the two. Perhaps if it was on his left, then he would have put it in the back of the net. But James Garner doubled our lead just after halftime. Maxim De Kuyper breaking down the left-hand side, playing the ball into Matthias Cunha. He was a goal scorer in the first half. He's turned goal creator here. And James Garner doubles the lead. The CPU were up to their old tricks, though. Raheem Sterling buried a penalty after a very, very soft decision by the referee and this gave Chelsea a route back into the game as 2-1 and although Chelsea did begin to press and started playing some much much better football than they played in the first half they couldn't quite draw level Mad Wake this time pulling his shot wide of Jordan Pickford's goal and that meant that when Victor Castro burst through on the right hand side cut it in onto his left foot and buried it past the Chelsea goalkeeper he managed to double the Everton lead once more, making it 3-1. And Chelsea thought they'd give themselves a second route back into the game as Jordan Pickford parried an initial shot away before Krista and Kunku put the ball in the back of the net. It was pulled back for offside, though the linesman's flag being raised almost immediately. So a big performance, and that could prove to be an incredibly important three points as we enter the home stretch of the season. There's still plenty of work to do, and we certainly should be considered underdogs for that Europa League spot. But if we can keep putting points on the board, then we're going to give ourselves the best chance possible. And that win means Chelsea stay in ninth position on 44 points, but we move up to 47 and 6th place one place and one point ahead of Spurs Spurs do still have that game in hand however and Spurs will be our opponents in our featured game of the episode they've got a very strong starting 11 but a fairly tired starting 11 van de ven Pedro Porro Hoiberg Madison Son and Kulisevsky to a lesser extent all feeling the fatigue at this late stage of the season but they'll also have Vicario in goal Romero and Gaia along the back line Yao Neves and Angel Correa in the side as well whereas Graham Potter has brought Ben Godfrey into the starting 11 for the first time in several weeks so Nana and Ghana remain the pairing in midfield and it's a rare start for David Washington on loan for Chel from Chelsea this season he hasn't particularly impressed in the games in which he has featured and it's his last chance really to prove that his loan deal should be made permanent in the summer. So without further ado, let's head down to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, see if we can put three more points on the board and see if we can nullify that game in hand that Spurs currently have over us. So we are up in the commentary box here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as we approach the very final stages of season two here. 
in our realistic takeover rebuild. It's been an up and down season to say the least. It's been a bit of a disaster of a season, to be honest. We've had multiple injury crises. We've had strings of poor results. We've had new signings that have not really panned out. The likes of Joachim Anderson, who tore his ACL almost as soon as we signed him. And Jack Harrison could be in behind here almost immediately. And he puts it away. Early slip up from Tottenham allows Jack Harrison in behind. And that was an innocuous situation for Tottenham. A throw in in our own half. And they just absolutely went to sleep on defence. And Jack Harrison, for the first time in a long time, was clinical with the finish. And three minutes into the game, we already have a 1-0 lead against one of our primary competitors for Europa League football next year. We've already gained three points over Chelsea. Another team very much in the hunt for European football. And we've got off to what is surely the perfect start here against Tottenham Hotspur. You challenge David Washington. He's another signing that hasn't really panned out this year. We did only bring him in on loan from Chelsea. On a loan to buy deal. So if we would like to make that transfer permanent, we can. However, I don't imagine we're going to be picking up his option. I believe Bertrand Traore has already played 20 games for us this season, so we are obliged to pick up his option. However, David Washington, it's more so up to us. It's much more flexible. And he hasn't quite impressed. He's been very much like Justin Deal. We brought him in with the hopes that he would be impactful as Tottenham Hotspur crack the bar. Almost equalising. Just minutes after we took the lead. And it's well worked from Tottenham. And we're asleep here on defence. Just like Tottenham were at the other end. And it has gone out for a Tottenham corner. Which James Madison is going to take. Kulisevsky has come short though. So I imagine that's the option that Madison will take and it's not Jack Harrison though heads clear Jack Harrison another signing not one that we made this season or good save Jordan Pickford really good effort from just outside the box but our number one goalkeeper and the clean sheet leader from season one in the Premier League was equal to it as he has been on so many occasions this time, Cotton do go short to James Madison. All the way back to Geyer, who works up to Van der Ven. Hoiberg on the edge of the box. And that's blocked eventually by an Everton man. And Amadou Onana just about dispossesses Heung-Min Son on the edge of the box. But Tottenham piling on some pressure here. Now that they've got... Now that they've established some control in the game... Kulusevsky on the right-hand side. Inside to Poro. Up to Yao Neves. In a position to cross if there's targets in the centre to aim for, which there aren't. And it's a poor touch from Kulusevsky. That sees the ball go out for an Everton throw. Ahmed Hodjic across to Ben Godfrey. And Patterson is his outlet on the right-hand side. There's Washington into James Garner. And it's a really nice pass through that gap to David Washington. Initially dealt with by Tottenham Hotspur, but Washington pressing high forces a mistake. But it is a Tottenham throw, and Hoiberg has it deep in his own final third. And he almost gave the ball away there to Matthias Cunha. Hoiberg once more, now in a more advanced position into Angel Correa. Jan Neves once more. Oh, and he does well to wriggle away from the Everton defender. 
and Tottenham do have their equaliser. It's a really well worked goal that Pedro Porro eventually puts into the back of the net. But a really nicely worked move from Spurs. Puribia began the move inside his own penalty area really. And he was instrumental in the final third in terms of creating the goal. Pedro Porro, the man that put it in the back of the net, though. And 18 minutes in here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It is Tottenham 1, Everton 1. So, Graham Potter's side looking to get back in the driver's seat. Tottenham enjoying a good spell of possession and pressure over the last 10, 15 minutes or so. Certainly since the ball hit the back of the net for the first time in the game. And Everton really looking to re-establish control here. Good pressing high again from David Washington. Winning the ball back. Mateus Cunha on the half turn. Doesn't have too many options ahead of him. So he just goes back to Onana. Nathan Patterson again his option on the right hand side. Again, there are just too many Tottenham defenders in the vicinity for the Everton man to be able to progress. So instead, it goes backwards to Branthwaite and Ahmed Hodgic. Nathan Patterson on the right-hand side collects that switch of play. Just plays it inside to James Garner. Oh, and it's a good sliding challenge from the Tottenham man. Equally so from Ahmed Hodgic. And there's Patterson once more. Plays the ball nicely in behind into the path of David Washington. Ken, can you get there first? No, he can't. It's the Tottenham defender, I believe, Van der Ven, who came across to deal with it and dealt with it very well because that was a dangerous situation for Tottenham. The game very much slowed down now that Tottenham are back level. James Garner in an advanced position, though. I'm going to do Onana now. Steps onto the Tottenham defenders who back off, allowing Onana to shoot, but the left footed shot is scuffed horribly wide. And Tottenham and Vicario do have the goal kick. Which Gaia receives. David Washington again pressing high. He is young, he does have fresh mobile legs. David Washington. The effort has certainly been there from the Chelsea Loney this season. It's just the quality really hasn't been. Ben Godfrey switches to James, uh, Jared Branthway is the gentleman's name. Nice ball from Jack Harrison. Looking for Matthias Cunha in the middle, but couldn't quite find him. And how Correa comes away for Tottenham. Onana thought he could just steal that away from Hoybjerg, but again... The Tottenham man retains possession. Something he does very, very well, Hoybjerg. And it's set Madison away now. Good intervention from Jack Harrison, but it does fall to the Tottenham man in Angel Correa. But fortunately for Jordan Pickford, the shot was pretty much straight at him. And Everton would just work it across the back line once more and into the feet of Nathan Patterson. There's James Garner, nicely found by Ahmed Hodgic. And again, Washington is in behind. Can he find Mateus Cunha this time? Yes, he can. And Cunha is into the box with some space to finish. The shot far too close to Vicario, though. He had to go across the goalkeeper. There was little chance of being able to put it in at the near post. As I think Jack Harrison is offside. The linesman's flag stays down. I was certain the offside flag was going to go up there. As Onana takes his opportunity to drive at the Tottenham back line. A little twist in the turn from David Washington gets him into the box. But dealt with well by the left-back Gaia. Washington again pressing high. He's been relentless in his high press today. Has David Washington. Kulisevsky. Neves now. Kulisevsky with a good run. Jared Branthwaite should be able to get there first, and he does. And Jordan Pickford will just clear in search of David Washington. Challenges well for the header, but I think he was beaten in the air. 
Romero into Neves. A really nice pass into the path of Van Hel Correa. Ahmed Hodjic there to meet him. Doesn't quite manage to block the shot come cross. Ahmed Hodjic and I thought Jordan Pickford had parried that one away. Apparently not. It's going to be a goal kick for Everton. It looked as though Jordan Pickford had parried that away at the near post. But the referee and linesman managing to agree that it did just go straight out from the Tottenham striker. Tottenham very robust in midfield, making it really difficult for us to play our way through. Maxim de Kuyper, Amadou Onana. That is, of course, a problem when you do only play two central midfielders in that 3-4-3 formation. This time, the linesman's flag does go up. And it's going to be a free kick to Tottenham. Dav uh, David Washington just straying a couple of yards offside there. Really just not looking down the line at all to check where and when he could make his run. Romero for Tottenham gives it straight to Jack Harrison. Who is away, but Christian Romero still in the vicinity. Jack Harrison cuts inside. Maintains possession. James Garner eventually makes a run. Can he find space to shoot? Van der Ven is there. And he did just enough to force James Garner to shoot across goal. Where Vicario was able to parry away. Jack Harrison currently stood over the corner, but it's actually going to be James Garner to put it in. And he's going to ask for a run across the near post from Matthias Cunha to hopefully open up space in behind for Jared Branthwaite. And that is exactly what happens. But Vicario again equal to the shot. Parrying the powerful header from Branthwaite away. It was very close to the goalkeeper to be fair. There was nobody on that far post. So if Branthwaite could have steered it slightly further away from the Tottenham goalkeeper. I think he would have been in trouble. And it could easily have been 2-1 just before half time. Instead, Tottenham come away with an opportunity to create the final chance here in this first half. And Hume Son has beaten Nathan Patterson for pace and has an opportunity to put the ball into the box, which he takes. Kulusevski's header, though, is a tame one. And it does fly over the bar. So with one of the two added minutes having already elapsed, it does look like it's going to be one all at half time here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium an entertaining first half a close first half both sides creating opportunities and the referee's half time whistle does go and it's Tottenham 1 Everton 1 and we are back out for the second half at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as we look to take all three points here in this tough tough away fixture Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, not an easy place to go. Tottenham, a talented side from top to bottom. And they do have a very distinct, very clear, very coherent way of playing. Maxim Lukaip is going to have to be careful not to foul Kulusevski here as he enters the box. Which he does manage. And it's just going to be an Everton goal kick. Which Pickford will... Just laying to the path of Branth Branthwaite. Eventually finds Armoured Hodgic. Branthwaite once more. Armoured Hodgic again. Ben Godfrey. Nathan Patterson finds the run of James Garner. Who in turn finds the run of David Washington. And again the linesman's flag stays down. He's got one defender for company, David Washington. Just about manages to beat him. But I think... The Tottenham defender had maybe been watching David Washington in the knowledge that he was going to be facing him today because he just showed him inside onto his left foot and it certainly is weaker of the two. And the shot was blocked and then eventually parried away on the second attempt by Vicario. James Garner can't quite get there. And Angel Correa comes away with it. Thankfully, Ben Godfrey was the Everton defender back because... Jared Branthwaite and Arno Armand Hodgic, whilst not slow, certainly not for central defenders, 
They're certainly not blessed with pace. James Garner once more. Can he lay it in front of Matthias Cunha? Not quite. Instead, he laid it in front of Van der Ven. And Tottenham again come away with the ball through Porro. Gaia. Porro once more. Drastically out of position. Come all the way across from right back to lay that into the path of Gaia. When Jack Harrison does, way to, does well to wriggle away from two Tottenham defenders. He does just run into traffic though. Onana. Patterson into Washington. Can't find James Garner with the little inside pass. Correa. Not made too much of an impact on the game so far, Correa. That's a really nice ball into the path of Madison. Jared Branthwaite facing him down and Maxim de Kuyper eventually puts the foot in and manages to clear. And Amadou Onana and Jack Harrison on this left-hand side manage to work away into the Tottenham final third between them. It wasn't the prettiest counter-attack, but in the end it was effective. But Tottenham deal with it well. Ben Godfrey, Nathan Patterson. Again, not much on ahead of him, so he just lays the ball back to Ben Godfrey. A draw wouldn't be the worst result for Everton here. That's a poor pass from Maxim de Kuyper. And Pedro Porro is away. Maxim de Kuyper just steps in front of him. Jared Branthwaite and Jordan Pickford's going to clear. In search of David Washington, who he finds on the right-hand side. And Nathan Patterson is away in acres of space. James Garner in just as much space in the middle. And he's found by the Everton man. And it falls kindly to Mateus Cunha, who cracks the ball against the post. We saw Tottenham hit the bar in the first half. Matthias Cunha has now hit the post in the second. And we were just inches away from taking the lead there. Really nice turn from Matthias Cunha. But dealt with well and recovered well by Van der Ven. Not sure who the Tottenham player was that ended up on the ground after that challenge from David Washington. And I'm not sure... If he has picked up a knock or if he was just slow to get up. I think potentially it was number three for Tottenham. But I'm not sure off the top of my head who that is. Regardless, Tottenham are going to make a change. It's Hoybjerg who's been instrumental in centre midfield for Tottenham today. Graham Potter declining to make any changes in response for the time being. And Human Son finds Angel Correa as Tottenham look to take the lead and make this game count. They have a game in hand over us, Tottenham. So if they could get three points here and then win their game in hand, they would do a really good job of establishing a, a significant advantage over us in that hunt for that Europa League spot. So that's why I say that a, a draw wouldn't be the worst result. Because if we can prevent that from happening. Then we do stay very much in the run. A win would obviously be preferable. But. Campbell. Graham Potter about to make a change. Graham Potter about to make two changes. As James Garner and David Washington leave the field. Josh De Silva is the man to replace Garner. And Lewis Dobbin, the exciting young Everton man, makes his return. He's been injured for several months after having been recalled from his loan spell. And he takes his place back in the side. A player that we really had high hopes for. Who played a, a bit part role last season really. And he's already on the ball here. Can he lay, lay it out in front of Mateus Cunha? He just about manages to do so. 
And Mateus Cunha buries it. 2-1 Everton. Doesn't count as 3-1. But will certainly take the second goal. And Lewis Dobbin immediately makes a difference after coming off the bench. Just as I was saying, he is a player that we have high hopes for. He lays the ball into the path of Mateus Cunha. He makes no mistake with the finish. A bit part player last season. And we were hoping that this season, Lewis Dobbin would go out on loan, really get some good first team football under his belt, even if it was at championship level. And then come back to us ready to play a significant role next season. Obviously hasn't worked out that way, but the silver lining is that he's been able to be around the Everton first team a little bit more often this year. And that's going to be something that will set him in good stead going forward. Josh De Silva right now is the man going forward. He's going to have to hit a left, uh, a right-footed shot rather. He would have preferred to have hit a left-footed shot across Vicario. But there was no way he was going to be able to transition that onto his left foot and still be able to get the shot off. Ingman Son bearing down on goal now for Tottenham and it's dealt with superbly well by Ahmed Hodjic. Just stayed calm, got in front of his man, got between Son and the Everton goal and dispossessed him excellently. Jared Branthwaite just about finds Jack Harrison on the left-hand side. Jack Harrison is away with Maxim de Kuyper making the run outside him. There's nobody in the box to aim for, though. Literally nobody. Maxim de Kuyper on his right foot doubles the lead. And the linesman's given it as offside. He said that Josh Silva... He said that Josh Silva has interrupted play in an offside position by standing in the way of Vicario. And looking at the replay there, you can't really argue against that. De Silva clearly in an offside position and clearly inhibiting the ability of Vicario to dive away to his left-hand side towards the shot of Maxim de Kuyper. And Justin Silva basically prevented Vicario from even being able to attempt to make a save there. So you have to say fair enough. Tottenham pressing for the equaliser. It's going to be a Tottenham corner. And it is going to be one in the box, but it is going to be parried away by Jordan Pickford. A really good header from the Tottenham man. But Pickford equal two as Van der Ven comes off to be replaced by Edmund Tapsabar for Tottenham. And again, it looks like Tottenham are going to take the corner short, which they do. James Madison headed clear at the near post. Tottenham continue to press, looking for the equaliser for a second time today, though. There's Madison back to Tapsabar. Steps onto the Everton midfield who declined to put in a challenge and eventually it's a good block by Armut Hodgic. I think this is going to stay in though. The Tottenham player does just let it go out for another corner, which Madison again will take. It's going to be another change or two for Graham Potter first though. So two more changes for Graham Potter and Everton. Maxim McKayper and Jack Harrison, the men to go off this time to be replaced by James Justin a defensive option in that left wing back position and Bertrand Traore the man to come on to replace Jack Harrison Josh De Silva heads clear Matthias Cunha going to be able to bring this ball down and potentially hit Tottenham on the quick counter attack which is exactly what he's done Tottenham defender stepped up to try and make a challenge and Matthias Cunha could finish here before Tap Sobar comes across to deal with it and instead of Vicario diving away to his left-hand side with a really, really good save. Cunha is not going to be the ball, the, 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 the man to put the corner in here. Instead, Traore is. He's put it almost right onto the head of an Everton man. 
Lewis Dobbin into the Tottenham box. He's got plenty of pace. Lewis Dobbin just plays it off the Tottenham man and out for another Everton corner. Just a couple of minutes to go in the game. And that is a woefully poor corner kick. In case you couldn't tell, I didn't really mean to do that. De Silva! Wide. Lucario may have had it covered. We'll never know. But just De Silva lashes at it with his left foot. And it does go wide of the Tottenham goal. But as we approach the 90-minute mark, we do have the lead here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. James Madison. Wide to Pedro Porro. Bertrand Traore surely is going to be booked for that when the referee does eventually stop play. It's not going to be right now, though. Amadou Onana can't quite clear. James Justin lays it into the path of Jared Branthwaite, though. And Ben Godfrey just plays it up to Matthias Cunha. And there's space in the corner for Lewis Dobbin to while away a few precious minutes here. Five of which have been added to the game. Dobbin just finds Patterson. And again, there's space in the corner. Lewis Dobbin, the man, now that he can recycle the ball too. And as we approach the fourth minute of stoppage time, Tottenham eventually put a foot in. But can't prevent the ball from going out for an Everton throw. Just as Silva can't hold on to the ball though, but he does win it back immediately. And it is a Tottenham throw, but right by their corner flag is not the position in which they would like to be. And five minutes have now elapsed. James Justin has the ball at his feet and the referee blows his final whistle. And it is two incredibly important wins at an incredibly important point in the season. As we first travel to Stamford Bridge and take three points from Chelsea and then travel to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and take three points from Tottenham. Matthias Cunha, the man with the winning goal, he's been excellent for us so far this season. And he's come up big again here today. So it'll be interesting to see how the table now stands with those extra three points on the board. And the way the Premier League table looks is this. We hold on to sixth place. We move up to 50 points and we move four points away from Tottenham. So although they do have that game in hand on us, as do Chelsea, Tottenham cannot draw level on points with us, even if they win that game in hand. Chelsea, of course, can. We have a better goal difference than Chelsea on plus 12. We do still remain three points behind Liverpool, who currently occupy that fifth place. European football obviously is a big consideration of ours ahead of next season, but it's not the only big consideration. We also have to figure out what to do with Amadou Onana. We rejected a bid from Newcastle last summer for Onana, but Arsenal have just come in with a bid of their own. And when we rejected that Newcastle bid, we did it with the promise to Onana that he would be able to leave this summer if a big club came in with an offer for him and even if we did somehow manage to squeeze into Europe next season we would be in the Europa League whereas Arsenal are top of the Premier League currently leading the way for the title and they will of course be playing Champions League next year so for that reason Buzzco's realistic selling calculator does say that we must accept this offer from Arsenal we did of course use the one club man trait on Onana however we have promised that he can leave the club we don't have to accept the offer as it is though we can negotiate Arsenal up to about 43 million all we can manage to get from Mikel Arteta and Arsenal is 32 million we have promised Onana the move so we will let him go for that and considering Arsenal were being linked with Onana for a fee more in the region of 80 million a couple of seasons back that feels like a steal for Mikel Arteta and of course Onana does agree to terms with Arsenal so when the transfer window opens again in the summer Onana will finally be on his way out of Goodison Park. Graham Potter has had his eye on a ready-made replacement for Onana, though, in the form of Anton Stack from Hoffenheim. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a bid for the German midfielder next summer. But now, though, Onana has a chance to impress his future team as he lines up alongside Lewis Ferguson as we host Arsenal at Goodison Park. Joachim Anderson returns to the centre of that back line and Bertrand Traore 
returns to that starting three alongside Cunha and Jack Harrison. We started brightly in this one as well. And Thais Cunha has been causing real issues for defences with those runs in behind. And he got in behind the Arsenal back line early. But unfortunately, his shot with his outside of his right foot was just pushed wide. It was a back and forth game in the first half though. And Jordan Pickford did well to stop the shot from Bukayo Saka at the near post after he'd done well to get into the Everton penalty area. Aaron Ramsdale made a couple of good saves of his own as well. This one from Jack Harrison cutting in off the left-hand side onto his weaker right foot. And he kind of pushed a curling effort towards the near post, which Ramsdale was equal to. Harrison had another chance shortly after as Amadou Onana played him through. This time he did have the ball on his stronger left foot, but the shot was an even weaker one and it went harmlessly wide. And it was Arsenal who would eventually open the scoring in the first half. Mendy cutting in off that left-hand side, taking up a very narrow central position before he laid the ball into the path of Fabio Vieira, who hit it left-footed on the half turn. And it was a really tidy finish. Just after the half-time break, though, Matthias Cunha again burst away from a couple of Arsenal defenders, fired a left-footed shot across Aaron Ramsdale. And this one was on target, tucked again neatly just inside the far post to make it one all. And Arsenal pressed for a winner in the second half and a mistake from Arno Armand Hodgic almost gave them exactly that. Martin Erdegaard stole the ball away, laid it into the path of Gabby Jesus, but his shot was far too close to Jordan Pickford, who parried away. And Erdegaard himself almost had a winner shortly after. Mendy lofted the ball into the box, but Erdegaard's header under duress from Jared Branthway ultimately was a tame one, and it just bounced harmlessly wide, which meant that Arsenal left the door open for a late winner for the home side, which is exactly what happened. Matthias Cunha... The man you would want with the ball at his feet in exactly that kind of situation. And again, he made no mistake with the finish. So it does make it three wins out of three in the episode so far against three very good opponents in Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal. Three very, very tight games though. Only a goal or two in it on each occasion. And Cunha's excellent run of form recently sees him take the lead in the race for the Premier League Golden Boot. He's now scored 20 goals in 30 Premier League matches ahead of Phil Foden in second place on 18 and ahead of a handful of players in Isaac Holland and David for Manchester United, each on 15 goals. In addition to those 20 goals, Cunha also has four assists on the season. So an excellent first season in Everton blue for Cunha. Reese Nelson somehow remains in second place in the goal scoring charts for Everton at the very least despite having been out with a torn ACL for the majority of the season. Asan Diaw, the same, has been injured for several months now, but he still has six goals and six assists, which sees him sit in third place. And Victor Castro in just seven games has scored four goals, so potentially a big boost to his potential and development in the run-in at the end of season two here. But that does bring us to our fourth and final game of the episode as we take on Brentford to round out April. Lewis Dobbin gets his first start in several months for Everton in this one as he joins Jack Harrison in support of Matthias Cunha. Otherwise, the team is unchanged. And this one was another absolutely dominant performance. You can see the score there, 6-0. And honestly, it's not even worth showing the highlights from this one. You probably noticed that all of the goals we've scored so far in the episode have been fairly similar. Somebody breaks through the defensive back line and puts the ball in from a one-on-one -on -one against a basically helpless goalkeeper. And this game continued in much the same way, basically. I've been ratcheting up the difficulty throughout the entire testing period really on world class and it just barely seems to make a difference against brentford the cpu had a plus five acceleration advantage and despite that i was still able to run in behind easily without even breaking a sweat without even really trying so the state of the game where it currently is we're just going to sim to the end of season two here we've got four games left to play against norwich against man city leicester and newcastle and the chips are just going to fall where they may. We will hope for another update in due course. And then potentially we can return to the series for season three. But I don't see a lot of point in playing out this final episode when legendary is basically unplayable. And world class is 
almost as unplayable but just for different reasons we've drawn level with liverpool on points at this stage but liverpool do have a game in hand on us so i'm going to sim through these last four games if we make europe we make it if we don't we don't and we can decide what to do from there so the first of these four matches is against norwich city they have a very similar 11 to when we played them earlier in the season tanganga and bobby deckard over reed the combination on the right hand side just charging up front whereas graham potter is going with the same side that absolutely decimated brentford in the previous game and we come out three nil winners over norwich city Cunha with another goal he had a hat trick in the last game lewis ferguson with a goal as well after Cunha opened the scoring in the seventh minute man city should prove tougher opposition though they've got erling Haaland and phil foden two of the top five scorers in the league up front whereas graham potter's brought bertrand Traore and james garner back into the fold for this one and manchester city do run out 3-1 winners foden and harland the scorers for manchester city foden grabbing two bertrand Traore, the only scorer for everton our third game was against leicester city who are now captained by moonayin a new signing for them during this season and Didi remains from the previous 11 though as does Everson in goal and Valt Fass at the back number of changes for Graham Potter in this one Noah and Bamba and James Tarkovsky come back into the side alongside James Justin at the back and Josh De Silva returns to midfield alongside Amadou Onana and it's a seven goal thriller which Leicester City end up coming out on top in Munayin opened the scoring in the fourth minute for James Justin and Harrison gave Everton the lead just before half time Cataldi scored for Leicester in the second half, just after the break, Mavadidi extended the lead in the 68th minute. Munayin grabbed his second 82 minutes into the game before David Washington came on to grab a, another consolation goal for Everton. Which leaves our final game against Newcastle United, who currently occupy that fifth spot in the Premier League. That Europa League spot that we've been aiming for all season. However, Newcastle are four points ahead of us, so we can't catch them up even if we beat them today. However, Manchester City are in second place and they are also in the final of the Europa League. Each of those two things will grant them a Champions League place, so I think there's a chance that we could qualify for Europe in sixth position this season. We do have several teams behind us ready to take that sixth position from us though, so that is dependent on on getting a win here against a relatively strong Newcastle United side. So Graham Potter has gone with his strongest 11 for this one, with the potential exception of Arno Ahmed Hodgic making way for Ben Godfrey. Maxim de Kuyper got a red card in the previous game, so is suspended for this one. James Justin comes in in his place. And Newcastle end up winning 3-1, so it's likely a moot point anyway that Manchester City could win the Europa League. Results around the league did go our way though, particularly Aston Villa losing 2-0 to Arsenal. So we do take sixth position in the Premier League and that could just about be enough to qualify for Europe depending on what happens with Manchester City in the Europa League. So that will be the end of season two of the realistic takeover real build with Everton. And unfortunately, it will be the end of the series for the time being at least. The state of the game is just is ruining the series at the moment and I don't want to keep trying to persevere through playing these games when they are just ruined not only on legendary but also on world class so for now we'll put the series to bed and if gameplay does improve over the coming weeks months if we get another update slightly further down the line perhaps we can revive the series and begin again in season three i will however still be active on the channel there's a couple of series coming up that don't rely quite so much on realistic gameplay something we can just have a little bit more fun with um a bit more of a fantasy style rather than trying to keep things super realistic. Again, just based on where the gameplay is at the moment, we can't replicate a realistic style of football on the pitch. So there's no point even trying. So we're just going to have a little bit of fun over the next couple of series, experiment a little bit. So I do hope you stick around for those. And I do hope we can get back to creating some really realistic, true sim kind of experiences on FC24 before too long. But I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.